Okay, I'd like to try this one. A physical pendulum consists of a rod uh, rotating around one end, and I want to find its frequency of oscillation. I probably should have mentioned that I want to find it in the small angle limit, because that's where we do things with pendulums. So I will make sure that's in the comments below or the description below, but this is still what I want is that small angle limit. So if I want to draw this and figure out what's going on, well, first I try to draw a straight line for my bar here. Um, and I want to make sure that I know that it's oscillating at some frequency omega. This is the angular frequency. We don't need in this class to worry about the different kinds of frequencies because I'm only doing symbolic stuff. And what's that going to do? Well, that's just going to move around like that. It's just going to move around like that. Um, so, you know, there'll be some angle theta that it'll move up here. And uh, that angle is now a variable. It's not something that we're going to solve for, although it's going to show up in our equations, right? So it'll go up to that angle theta. Uh, the bar, I said, has a length L. And that's probably all I really need. I don't, in this case, need to worry about that center of mass like I did in the last video, but that's all right. Okay, so let's go with orange. What do we have here? What do we know about this physical pendulum? Well, it's a rod of mass m and of length l. And I want to find the oscillation frequency, which I could probably just say frequency, but that's okay. Okay, so that is my planning, right? Um, well, that's my analysis of the problem, my qualitative analysis. Now I need to get into some more quantitative ideas about that before I do my plan, execute it, and then check out all the things at the end. Remember, this is a shortened and abbreviated version of that long form thing that I have you do in class just because I want to make sure everything fits on one screen. So this is where we are, and we're about ready to start. So let's see, what, are, what is our concept here? Uh, this is a simple harmonic motion problem. We want to find that frequency of oscillation. That is a property of the simple harmonic motion, right? That is a property of the oscillatory motion, um, not necessarily simple harmonic motion, but you're not equipped for more complex kinds of motion right now, right? And the basic equation for that simple harmonic motion is the second time derivative of x plus the square of the frequency of the oscillation times x is equal to zero. Any deviations gets you off of simple harmonic motion. So that's basically what it is, and that has in it that big omega squared that we want to find, right? So we're probably going to use this right away. Um, in this case, I think we're going to need an extended body diagram. So you'll remember that last time I said we probably didn't really need it, but I'd do it anyway. Well, this time I think we really do need it. Okay, so let's draw a bar. And let's say this is our normal direction and this is our tangential direction. Here, likely this spot is the best place to worry about. Uh, this spot here is the center of mass, so we want to have an x and a plus um, for your pivot, right? your pivot. This shouldn't be on there, I'm just pointing it out, and this guy here is your center of mass. 
So just do an X and a plus, don't um, write pivot and center of mass on that diagram for me, because I'll be unhappy. Okay, let's see now. We have to add some forces. One force we love, because we always know it's there, is the weight. And if you remember from last time, at that pivot we have some force coming up here. Now, this is a torque. That means nothing, because we don't care about that. But we do know that this distance here is L over 2, so that's good. All right. Uh, what we really care about in this case is not the net force. We did the net force last time. It'll probably show up in just a second anyway. But we really care about that torque, which is going to go around this way. Right? It's going to slow down that rotation or speed it up going down this way when this is in this rotation or in this position, which is what I've drawn here. In the opposite On the opposite side, it's going to be opposite. But... You know, we just need to get an idea about what's going on with that net torque. Because that's going to help us build this thing here. Okay, so that's where we are. We've got all this stuff ready. We're doing a simple harmonic motion problem. We want to kind of get the problem into this form so we can just find omega by inspection. We'd like to do that. That makes life easy. So all we have to do is manipulate the equation so that it looks like this equation, and after we've done that, we can find the natural frequency. Everything is very nice. Um, so I think we're okay. Let's see, what do we need to do now? Well, we probably need to plan. So that plan, like I said, is probably going to start with the um, standard form. of the simple harmonic oscillator. Okay. Uh, that is going to be uh, theta double dot in our case, since we're using theta as our um, variable instead of x, wherever uh, x is here we want a theta, equals omega squared, and we want that omega, or we want a plus omega squared, it, times theta is equal to zero. Okay, and um, now this guy here is what we want, right? And this guy, we don't know. We'll probably find him in just a second. Um, and then we we'll use the orange to mention that this guy here is basically a dummy variable. We'll, we just want to leave him in our final equation. So we want to get rid of him. We're going to get something else equal to him in the end, and everything will be okay. So we're going to match this guy up with, with another theta later on. Let's see. So now that we've got everything like that for our standard form, we need to find that uh, theta double dot. Fortunately, that double dot is the second derivative, right? So we remember that... Um, the angular acceleration is that second derivative of the angle, right? dt squared. So we need to find something with that. And we know something that works with that, and that's the torque. The net torque is just the moment of inertia times alpha. So we're going to want to use our extended body diagram And that extended body diagram is tau, the torque is equal to I alpha, which is equal to I theta double dot, right? Which is going to be equal to um, W cross D, right? So the only thing we have here is this weight is not... Um, this weight is the only force that's going to do us do anything for us, so we're going to use that as our torque, right? So tau equals I alpha for the net, to net torque, and the individual torques are F cross D, which is what we have here. Um, 
we need to use something for that cross product. And that cross product is going to be basically, we've got one dimension here. So what we really care about is, you know, there is, an, there is a direction here and I didn't actually put it. So there's one direction here. So what we really want is the magnitude of W cross D, which is W D sine theta, okay? So up here, uh, right, we found this. Let's make sure we know what we've got and don't have. Found this, right? And we made all sorts of things that we don't know, right? So we've got uh, this, I we don't know, W we don't know, D we don't know, but I've taken this entire WD thing and put it over here. So this, this entire WD thing is here. We still have to find W and D, and we're going to have to find theta. We're going to have to find some reasonable um, way to write theta. But this is sort of where we are at right here. Um, so I think we have all of the real physics in there. Now we've got some definitions and some geometry and stuff to worry about that we need to add in, right? So we're still working on these equations. I just ran out of room here because I write so big. Therefore, we'll look for number four. So what should we look for for four? Well, I've got a weight sitting there, right? So why don't we just use the weight um, definition, okay? W equals mg. Fortunately, we know that one. This guy we're okay with because uh, he's a universal constant. So we're looking for W here, we're looking for D here, we're looking for sine theta here. So we're all, we're all right with that weight. Uh, D, D is from here to here or from here to the center of mass, which is halfway here. So that's L over two. So um, geometry gets us the D. D is equal to L over two. Uh, we need some other stuff. Mm, we need the moment of inertia. And that moment of inertia is I equals the center of mass moment of inertia, 1 12th ml squared plus the displacement moment of inertia, m times L over 2 squared. We talked about that in the last video. Um, basically, we take the moment of inertia if this thing's you know spinning around here, and then we add in some extra stuff because it's spinning around way over here. Then let's see, we have one less thing left here, which is this sine theta. So we'll make a small angle approximation. Okay, this is something uh, Walter Lewin has been doing for you for quite a bit of time. Um, and we're gonna keep using it because it's useful Fortunately for sine theta, it's really, really easy. Sine theta in the small angle approximation is just about theta. And that theta will be perfectly fine just sitting around in that equation when we get to it. So we're okay with all of the things that we need to go on. So we've got all of our plan figured out. Got some physics here. And then we have lots and lots of math down here. Um, or just definitions. These are just definitions, geometry, small things that will help us solve the problem. Now we just need to execute. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, I'm just going to start with 2 just to get it out of the way. Right, tau is equal to the moment of inertia times alpha which is equal to the moment of inertia times theta double dot, which is equal to minus WD sine theta, if I also use three. 
It's going to have to be minus because of the directions and stuff like that. Uh, you'll find it out if you just put WD there. It's going to have the wrong sign. It's going to be annoying when you take a square root later. Uh, let's see. Now I probably want to get this into standard form. So th this doesn't involve any standard substitutions, really. Uh, but I'm just going to get it into that standard form. So that means I have to subtract and divide by i. So I have theta w do double dot plus wd over i. And if I use this small angle approximation for that sine theta, just put a theta there, that's equal to zero. Okay, so three and seven. Okay, so I'm done. Well, I'm not really done because I have to, you know, put numbers in there. But other than having to put these numbers in there, I know um, from ins by inspection of this thing that omega squared is equal to WD over I. So all I have to do is, you know, say what my weight is, say what my lever arm is, and say what my moment of inertia is, and I'm done. Okay, so my weight is mg. Okay, and that was 4 over here. I think I no, I labeled these in different orders. That's okay. Sorry about that. Uh, 6 is my lever arm. So d is equal to L over 2. So we have mgl over 2 all over um, this moment of inertia here, which is equal to 1 third ml squared. So we have 1 over 3 ml squared. Okay, so what does that mean? That means I can cancel out these m's. That's good. I can get rid of that l. So I have 1, one over 1 third is 3 g over uh, 1 half times 1 over l. So I have 2 l. Or omega is equal to the square root of 3g over 2l. So that is the frequency of oscillation. You could find the period from that. You could find natural frequency, and you can do all sorts of things with that. We'll do something with it in just a moment after I check to see if this is an okay solution. Because obviously the third thing we want to do is get an idea about whether or not this is a good solution. And we've got a couple of things to do for that. We've got three things, actually. One is to make sure that it only has symbols that are up here or are universal constants, right? Um, so let's see. What are the symbols in my solution? I just care about my solution. I've got an L there. L is here. Give an L. Three and two, those are just numbers. I don't care about them. And so I've got a G, which is a universal constant, the gravitational constant I can always assume. So I've got these two guys here. Uh, I think we're pretty good, much okay as far as the symbols are concerned. We're okay with how that looks. Next, we have to worry about the dimensions. Okay, so I'll blank this out. We don't care about anything except for this guy here. Uh, we want omega, right? Omega is t to the minus 1 in hertz, right? Hertz is t to the minus 1. And we don't care about the numbers when we check our dimensions. We just care about the, the symbols. The numbers have no dimensions, so they're okay. We're, they're automatically okay. They can't do anything to screw us up. Okay, so let's see here. I've got g over l to the one half. I break that up. I've got the units of g to the one half times the units of l to the minus one half. Uh, the units of g are l times t to the minus two to the one half. Units of l are l to the minus one half. Um, let's see. So I can distribute that l or that one half. So I've got L to the one half, T to the minus one times L to the minus one half. L to the, the square root of L divided by the square root of L cancel out. So that's T to the minus one. So we're done. I'm, you know, this and this are the same. So we're good. 
So if we're good, yeah, we're done. So we've got a good solution here. Everything seems to be working out, out all right. It is in the small angle approximation. And you'll remember that was the reason why we didn't do something in the previous, in the previous uh, little lecture thing I gave you, the previous example. Okay, so, um, so I'd like to just go over and show that I can get the same answer with this as I got with the previous example, but also show that this gives you some sort of error. So this is first going to be something a little tricky, right? Because what we want to do is we want to define in the previous thing, if we have our bar here, we want to find this maximum angle of deflection theta max. Okay, if we had some initial angular velocity, uh, theta dot max, when it's in this um, vertical position, all right? And actually, we have an equation for this, right? So if we have um, theta is equal to uh, a cosine omega t, right, then theta dot is equal to a omega or minus a omega sine omega t. Um, and this is part of the reason why I, I'm using this dot notation here. That's because this omega is not the omega we used last time. This is the omega we used last time. That was the angular speed. That's a variable. Okay, and this omega here is our frequency, and that is a constant of the motion. That doesn't change with time. So that's sort of the issue that we had. But we can use this fairly readily, right? We've got no big issue. We know that um, A here is the maximum amplitude. That's actually, this is theta of t then theta max is equal to a, right? So uh, we know from just this stuff that theta max is equal to, or times um, omega is equal, I'm going to have to erase it. Okay, theta max times omega uh, still erasing. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, that is erasing. Why why doesn't it un take me off of the eraser? Okay. Oops. All right. Okay, so let's go back to that. So I was just going through all that, you know, we're trying to find that theta max. I'm very sorry about that, but I've talked too long to stop. Okay, so I talked enough about what we were doing before, so I can just start with the assumption that theta, theta dot max times omega, which is a just want theta max times omega is equal to theta dot max. Okay, we're good there. Um, and we just saw that that omega here is equal to um, the square root of three halves g over l. Now, given how long it took me to get this, that's already a good reason to use the conservation of energy from the previous example. 
okay? So g given that, that's a good reason to use this. But still, I want to show you um, some more fundamental reasons why. So we wanted to find what that cosine theta max was, right? We found the exact thing last time. Um, so this is approximately equal to one minus one half theta max squared. So this is the cosine version of that sine approximation. Remember, we did the sine theta is about equal to theta. Well, cosine theta is about equal to one minus one half uh, theta squared cosine stuff, uh, plus some stuff that's on the order of theta max to the fourth, right, that we're going to ignore. We're going to ignore that extra stuff right there. Um, from this thing, we have the theta max is equal to um, theta dot max that we're given, right? all over this omega. That omega was the square root of a bunch of stuff. So in here we actually have um, two theta dot max squared times L over 3G. Actually that looks very familiar because if we just substitute that in here we get one um, one minus that, the square root of um, theta dot max squared times L over 6G. And that's exactly, oh no, this is, oops, screwed that up. Do, 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 do. One of the nice things about erasers is you can erase things. Okay, so, so that is exactly um, one half um, square this thing times two theta dot max squared times L all over 3G and those twos cancel so we have one times 3G under under theta dot max squared L, this is exactly what we had before, right? Only we've had to do a whole lot more to get it, and it's off. We, we're only in an approximation here. Now, the thing is, is that this approximation is the thing that's wrong. This extra stuff, it turns out, is going, that's in, that's in your cosine of this this theta up here, this stuff is wrong because if the pendulum goes too high, it's no longer in simple harmonic motion. All right. So, so this, which is the correct exact solution, is wrong for simple harmonic motion for anything that's too large. So you have to, so it turns out that all this extra work you have to approximate to get the correct answer, and I don't know how you'd know to do that. Maybe you know how you'd know to do that. So I just wanted to point that out, that that was a, um, that not only do you have to do a lot of extra work here to get to get to the solution for the other, other thing, so you have to do all this work plus some extra work to get to the solution from the last video, that solution is only approx only approximately right for the things that you've done okay so um, don't use pendulum stuff unless it's absolutely necessary to use the pendulum stuff because the pendulum things are all approximations so only when those approximations are valid can you use the pendulum equations it's nice to have them, but only use them when the approximations are valid. 
All right. Okay. So that was a bit of a fiasco after I got done with the main part, but yeah, you know, that's all right. Um, technology is technology. So I will talk to you when I get to, to get to class on um, probably Friday morning. Hopefully you'll be watching this before Friday morning. And you have a really, really great night. Okay? Bye now.